Hey guys, welcome back to First Down with Dante and look who I have back. I had to bribe him. I mean, I had to cook him dinner. I had to make homemade marinara sauce and meatballs. He's so high maintenance. I said, Tom, please come back on the show. Our show was the most viewed ever. It's Tom, Amazing. It's Tom's special charisma. Yeah, that's it. It's your charisma. It's his because he's a rock star. Hey yeah. guys, I just want to show that I'm wearing this special shirt today. Can you, it says Paris. Um, what does it say? From Paris with love. So I'm wearing my Paris shirt today on the show in remembrance. You know, you know, so we can give remembrance to did the. Did you say Paris shirt? No, sh did I? That's what it sounded like. I don't know. I've I have I have tongue issues. But don't tell anyone. Just kidding. No, I think it, I can't remember what my shirt says from Paris with love. And so, anyways, I wonder where my Paris T-shirt. Just stick with the program, Tom. Oh, oh sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so because I wanted to, you know, honor our the victims and Paris, and that we stand together. So all that. So, anyways, so happy to have you back. Thanks How have you been? Thanks for having me. Good. Are you gonna be like? gloating this whole show because your Chiefs kicked my Broncos ass? No, I'm, I'm just relieved that we got a win and that we're uh, tied uh, second place in the division with the Raiders. Oh, you guys are tied with the Raiders? That's good. Oh, my gosh. Well, I just want to let you know that, you know, I am happy for you because we we did have uh, our Broncos record was 7-0, and and now it's 7-1. and So you guys finally came and beat us. So for that... I'm happy for you because statistically, you know, it would happen sooner or later. But you guys played a really good game and you guys were fresh. And the defense, like all the guys are just really scrappy and like running around. I mean, they're kind of like a young, fresh team, right? They are. They're, they're, um, they're a pretty solid team. I mean, I, I, I would hope that their uh, wins would be a, a little more than they are. But um, that, that was encouraging, you know. But I, I don't know. I kind of had mixed feelings about it even though they're my team I, I just I as, as much as I was happy for the win I just felt really bad for uh, Peyton and, and seeing a guy pass this amazing milestone and then get benched it was sort of strange you know yeah, it was sad I as you know I was at the game and so we're gonna show you guys all my clips from the game but um later on but it was sad being at the first of all it was a gorgeous day in Denver and it was sad because um, the first interception he did in the first quarter, I mean, the whole stadium was all riled up. And then as soon as he flew the first interception, you could just see the deflate of the energy just deflated. It's different when you watch it on TV and then you're there live. Because mm -hmm. everyone before the game's like, yeah, just standing up, getting everyone riled, running around. Everyone's like, ah, stomping your feet. And then first interception, everyone's like, so it was have you been to games before right absolutely you know how they have the music and mm -hmm. it's like really pumping it was so sad um anyways uh what what it was sad why i mean four interceptions what did it look like on tv it it looked like his, he just has real diminished arm strength i mean it looks like he's really uh struggling and uh you know now they're talking about it but injury to his foot and uh i mean i you know you, you just can't play forever you know it's just yeah, I, mean, I think great. it's hard to give it up right yeah and he's had the the, the surgeries that he's been through yeah. you know with it with his neck and you know how it's affected i mean it's amazing to me that he was even able to come back and, and play as well as he has and i think when he is on i think it's just because he's just such a great player. And, yeah, and he just has these little windows of where he's on. Well, see, you're, you know, you're a passion, you're a drummer. I mean, this is your, you're in a big rock band that tours the world. So it's like, if not you, that big. Well, you guys are pretty big. Cult, small cult following. But you guys, I mean, you tour around. Shut, I know you're being humble. But, anyways, it's like if you had arthritis in your hand, your drummer, you would be hard for you to give up your drums, right? It's like your passion. It's your release. It's your yeah. therapy, right? It's like it's hard for Peyton to give up something he's done since he was what six, seven years old. It's his passion. It's really sad. I, you guys, you know what? I just hope that he can come back. You know, break the other record, win some games, go in the playoffs. I think Brock's going to be fine. Actually, I think he's going to be good. 
And I just feel bad to go out this way, don't you? Well, every, you know, I, I think John Elway had probably like the greatest way you could end yeah. a career, yeah. like two back-to-back -back Super Bowls and that's yeah. it. But That doesn't it, always happen. No, and it, it generally never happens that way. Yeah. And now you're watching a guy who's one of the, greatest. arguably one of the greatest to play, ever, play that position and he's, you know, he, he, age is catching up to him. You know, yeah. you, you don't get to play forever, and it's it's, it's hard sad. for a professional athlete to to let go. And look at here's I kept the ticket. So this ticket I kept it because it is a you know he did break an NFL record. So I kept it. Maybe I can sell it on eBay. <laughs> Just kidding. Probably not now. But um, anyways, here's the ticket from the game. It was great. Hey, by the way, so later on the show, we'll cut and we'll sh I interviewed a pro football player, my first one, Carl Beckenberg, and he did tell me off camera that when he played, and he played for 13 years with John Elway, they were both um, uh, drafted in the same year. They were both rookies together, and John, he played for, I think, 13, 12 to 13 years, but John Elway played a few more years later, and I think with John Elway, they went to the Super Bowl three times, and then John Elway ended up going to the Super Bowl a couple more times, but... Carl told my brother and I that when you're a football player in the league, like you all play through injuries. He said they were all injured all the time. He says you just gut it out, play through the season, and you have your surgeries on the off season. Yeah. He goes, all the players were play through injury. You're nicked, you have a sprained knee, you just play through it. And I'm just reading that Eli had the same foot issue, but it was actually really torn, and he played through that 2009 season. He ended up being 8-8, eight eight, but I guess someone told me that it's some weird word, whatever, that foot thing that Peyton had in his brother, but I guess it feels like, you're, you're, it's like, like your foot is on burning coals. Is it like plantar fascia or something yeah, so, like, yeah, something that, like that. that? that's it. Yeah, um, but it's like feels, anyways, I don't know. I feel bad. I just hope that he can come back and at least play in the playoffs and, you know, hopefully. And I can't imagine Peyton coming back after this year. No, no, no. no. That would be... That would be weird. Well, people think... Someone told me that he wants to keep playing because Tom Brady's on his back breaking records. And Tom Brady thinks he's going to play into his 40s. And Peyton is such a competitor. He, he wants to keep playing so Tom doesn't catch up with him. Yeah. That's what I heard. Tom, Tom's in a lot better shape, though. He's, he's Why? Like, he I just think, wasn't injured? Is, I mean... Yeah, I think, he, I think he's probably... He's only a year 38 and Peyton's 39. Yeah, but he, I mean, you can tell like physically, he's just, you know. Do you think it's his wife that keeps him in good shape? <laughs> Who knows? I gotta stay young for my hot Giselle wife. Okay, so you guys, we're gonna cut to and see. I, I reported from the Bronco Stadium before the game live, so um, you guys can see this clip right now. Hey guys, guess what? It's first time with Dante, and like I said, guess where I am? I'm at the happiest place on earth, and what's that? Some of you, it might be Disneyland, but for me, it's Mile High Stadium. Look, this is the most beautiful place ever. Look, you guys, the Broncos are in a divisional game today against the Kansas City Chiefs. And we have beat the Kansas City Chiefs since we've had Peyton Manning seven times. And the Chiefs are coming in, they've had, they were on a bye, and they want to kick our asses. But we won't let them, because we are the Broncos, and we're gonna kick butt. So check back with me later, because I'll be filming during the game. Bye, guys. Go Broncos! Did you see what it was such a gorgeous day at um, at the stadium? And also, uh, what do you think of it? Was such a weird Sunday around the NFL? Like it was almost like Mercury was in retrograde, and Mercury is not supposed to be in retrograde. First of all, what happened? The Bengals got beat in Cincinnati by the Texans. The Packers were beat by the Lions at Lambeau. I don't think. The Packers have lost in Lambeau since 2010 or something crazy. It's been a what, super what long, was, especially to the Lions of all teams. I know. Teams. What's going on? I, I don't know. They're they're in they're Two in trouble days. right now. Yeah, but three in a row. Been? I don't know. It's. Uh, I mean, and by the way, Peyton has been beat up. He's 39. He has a sore shoulder, hurt foot, hurt ribs. Aaron Rodgers is 31 years old, so you can't say that Aaron's. You know. You know what I mean? There's excuses for Peyton and the Broncos, but what in the world is going on with the Packers? Well, I mean... He's a healthy 31-year-old quarterback. What's going on? Tell us. I mean, what clearly they miss Jordy Nelson. That, that yeah. was a huge loss not to have... He's such a great receiver and, you know, like a key target. 
And also, the, the other glaring problem is Eddie Lacy has just been completely unproductive this season. Because he's a little heavy, I heard. I don't know what it is, but he's, you know, he's always been really? super reliable, and he gives the team that balance because they yeah. have, like, a solid running game. But this year he's To really get beaten for... by the Lions? I mean, no offense. I actually like the Lions, but they're, like, 1-1 one, one game. How did they go in? You know, here's my take. The game before, I forgot who the Packers played last, the week before, but they were fighting on the sidelines, um, Packer players. They were oh, trying right. to punch each other. So I think there's like some hostility and divide in the locker room, and I think that translates on the field, and I think it's that's what's going on. That's my guess. I think there's some unrest amongst the players in the locker room, and I know you have to be cohesive. You have to be a unit to win, and anyways, it's just crazy that – I mean, by the way, you guys, my, I'm not going to lie to you guys. You know that my percentages on the predictions have been for, uh, 10 for 14 averaging. I was killed this weekend. I think I got eight games wrong, and I've never – because everyone – I mean, the sports analysts too. It's not my fault. How much money did you lose? Well, I don't bet. I just – like, but I have this really great, you know, record, but you guys – I mean, I had the Bengals winning. I had the Packers winning. I had, I mean, I, I mean, anyways, I just bombed. But hey, let's actually let's go over Week 11's predictions. Too. Okay, so it starts off Thursday night football: Titans at Jaguars. Boy, two very uninteresting teams. Well, but, what? But My Titans are interesting. They have Marcus Mariota. I'm going with the Titans because they beat – I saw what they did to the Saints, and they beat the Saints, and the Jaguars aren't that good. And I think that the Titans just lost last week because I think they're going to come back and Mariota's healthy. So when Mariota's healthy, I, I give it to – I'm saying the Titans. Just because you like Mariota. Yeah, that's right. I wish I was younger. I would go after him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not really kidding, but I would be like a MILF. <laughs> cougar. I would be a Cougar. Okay. I'm going to go, I think I might go with the Jaguars. Because it's at home? Yeah. I mean, they're, they've are they sort of been surprising. I mean, they're kind yeah, of Yeah, they just beat, who? They just beat some. Who did they yeah, beat? I can't even remember who they beat. Yeah, they just the had. The Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, they just had. Well, a, everyone's beating the Cowboys. Okay, we got to go faster. Raiders at Lions. Raiders. I'm going with the Raiders. Colts at Falcons. Falcons. Falcons, I'm going, because they don't have Andrew Luck. Right. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Rams at Ravens. Rams. Rams. Uh, Buccaneers at Eagles. 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 Broncos at Bears. And yeah. they have Brock starting his first NFL football game. I, and the Bears have won their last the two The Bears games. are one of those teams. Well, that, they're like, coached by John Fox and Adam Gase. And, you know, I, I'm like one of the few people that I know that likes Jay Cutler. Nobody, everyone just uh, throws shade at the guy. But I, I've always liked him. I mean, he Well, can, I think he's coached he, properly. Well, he can be really streaky, but yeah. when he's on, I mean, he has probably one of the strongest arms in the entire Well, league. you know, the Broncos aren't favored to win. Uh, can you believe that? I... You can believe that. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I I will never go against the Broncos, uh, so I'm going with the Broncos. I'm going to go with the Broncos. Um, Jets at Texans. Oh, the Texans just beat the Bengals. I'm going to go with the Texans because I think they're Their super motivated is, now. Yeah. They're at home. and You know what? I can't go against my Jets because I love them. And Brandon Marshall is one of my favorite players. And I will, we got Jack disturbing us on the show. Um, so we're, I'm going with the Jets. Uh, Redskins at Panthers. 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 Cowboys at Dolphins. Tony Romo's back. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Cowboys. I'm going with the Cowboys. Uh, Chiefs at Chargers. Chiefs. Chiefs. Green Bay at Vikings. They're both in the NFS. You know, that they're ahead. This is a big rival. This is a big game. You know that, right? Yeah. It, I, I, it's, I can't imagine the Packers losing. I'm they going have, with, they have, the Packers have to win. I, I'm, like going with the pa I'm going with the Packers. The Vikings are a super good team. I know. I'm going with the Packers. 49ers at Seahawks. I'm Seahawks. going with Seahawks. Bengals at Cardinals. Oh. This one is hard, you guys. I'm going to go with the Cardinals. I think they're really you know good what? at home. I'm and... going with the Cardinals, too. This was a hard one for me to choose. Now, Bills at Patriots. 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 God, it's so boring. Oh, the Giants almost beat Tom Brady, and that would have made the loss to my Broncos so much easier. Anyways, you guys, those are our predictions. Let us know what you think. And also, um, let's 
check out my first pro football player interview that I did inside the Broncos Club with Carl Mecklenburg, who is such a gentleman and was so kind. And um, he was so nice and to let me interview him. And my brother did such a great job. So thanks, Chris. And just because, you know, I forgot I should have filmed it landscape. And so we did it. That's one thing I learned. You always have to film it landscape. So it so I made that mistake, guys, but not next time. So here, check out the interview with Carl. Hey guys, guess what? I just fangirled Carl Mecklenburg, and he played for the Broncos for how many years? For 12 years, from 1983 through 1994. Wow. And look how big he is. And you know, I'm 5'10", and this guy's big. Now look at he, he, we got engaged. <laughs> so it took me to fly to Denver to find a man, and I got engaged. Look at his rings. Now let's show your other one. I got a couple more at home, but you can only you wear go. so many of these. I'll things. let it. You, you give me the real thing. <laughs> so, anyways, we want to know now. Who did you? Who was your quarterback during those days? I was a rookie the same year Elway was. So, oh wow! And Gary Kubiak was drafted that year too. John was the first pick. I was the twelfth pick. Oh my god! And you guys went to the Super Bowl how many times? Three times when I was there, and then John finished up with a couple more. So you're kind of a tall, strapping fella. You must have played either defensive line or offensive line. No, I was a I was a linebacker and a defensive end for the Broncos. Oh wow! So yeah, moved around all the time. They played me in all seven front positions at different times throughout a game. Oh, that's awesome! And you and you've kept in great shape. Well, thank you. Now ask him about the, he's on the ring, in the ring of... Oh yeah, uh, and, and you're in the ring of fame, which is right. very, that's a big accolade and very hard to get into. And tell us about that, the ring of well, fame. Well, yeah, Mr. Boland, when he uh, bought the team back in 84, put the ring of fame in, and uh, if you're one of the top players for the team, eventually, hopefully you'll get in there. There's 28 people in the ring of fame at this point. Oh, wow. And so since you were a rookie when they drafted Kubiak, what do you think of Kubiak coaching the Broncos this year I'm and excited. having, having really Elway bring him back? Yeah, you know, uh, Gary Gary was running first string uh, when we were rookies until they traded for Elway. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, he had to be a backup his whole career. But he was such a team guy, he was very good at that. You know, he he uh, gave us a great look as a defense uh, when he was running the scout team. He, uh, very positive all the time and, and, and a team guy and, and that's what you need for, yeah. for a coach. And he's a players coach? You know, in, in many ways he is. Yeah. But he understands what it means to be uh, one of the guys and part of the team and, and does a great job of leadership. I heard that when Aqib Tlaib did that little boo-boo in Indianapolis that actually Gary sat with Tlaib all the way back on the plane. <laughs> oh my gosh, I would have loved to have been a fly. <laughs> yeah. He sat with him the whole flight back. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I knew something he didn't do. <laughs> now, what do you think all this talk about Peyton and his rib and like, is that just like fault? Is it like a rumor? I mean, they say it's true, but all of a sudden he has a rib injury. And, you know, on my show, I always stick up for Peyton because I hate all these Peyton haters. Yeah. What do you have to say about Peyton and his interceptions and all that stuff? You know, uh, is it all bull what, honky? What, no, you know, truthfully, what, what makes Peyton great is his... Uh, is decisive. Yeah. And, and to be decisive as a quarterback, you have to completely understand the, the system that you're in. Yeah. Obviously, in the past, he's, he's had a great grasp on what was going on. Uh, this year, he's learning a whole new system, and it takes a while to develop it. That's what I say. People are like, he's learning a whole new system. Demarius Thomas sat out, wasn't at all the camps, and so the chemistry, and you know what? Who cares if he has interceptions? I mean, as long as we get the W. That's right. We got to win. Well, you are so sweet. Thank you. We're so honored at First Down with Dundee to have this amazing ring of famer. And I got engaged. I'm really happy. Hey, Dad. <laughs> hey, Dad. Always have hope for your little one. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank so, you. Yeah, Carl was so nice. And, and I, you know, like I said, I'm engaged now. I had to go to Denver to get engaged. Well, okay. Do you know that there's real men in Denver, present company um, excluded? There's Wait. real men. Men in Denver actually like women. They don't like women in Los Angeles. No, no, no. I think they. I think they're switch hitters. Uh, <laughs> well, it is Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, trust me. There's a lot of switch hitters. Got to keep your options open. Anyways, it was so fun, and also when I was there, the Broncos Club, you guys, is so much fun. My brother had great seats, and you get to go in. There's all these fireplaces and food and bars, and they had every TV with filming with um all the games on. My brother had a. I've never had so much fun. Actually, it was it was like 
pure gold happiness to me. And they had free, free um, face painting. So I had my face painted. At first I was like, no, why do I want to cover up this face? But then I was like, <sighs> and then I was like, no, I got to get my dude's number. So check this, check me out in the Broncos club and I'll show you um, who from the Broncos I painted on my face. What number are you guys? Hey guys, it's First Time with Dante back with you and I'm inside the Mile High Club. And this place is amazing. I mean, check out this fireplace with the Broncos head. This is amazing. Now, how can I get this fireplace in my house? This would be totally key. So listen, I just want to let you guys know, this place is pimp and I'm going to get some nachos soon. But also they have free paste, paint, uh, face painting and look at You guys all know I love Demarius Thomas, so I'm representing DT today because he's going to do two touchdowns, and that's my prediction. So anyways, you guys, we're having so much fun. My brother and I are going to go eat and go to the pro shop, but I'll check in with you guys later. We'll film some segments from the game. Love you guys. Kisses. Okay, what a crazy week of football. We did our predictions, and this week it was hard. You know how I do the Unsung Hero of the Week? It was hard to choose anyone because... I just really think that our unsung heroes, usually I try to tie it in with some football player, but you know what? It's to all the police and army and servicemen and everyone in Paris that protected those people and went in there to the Backland Theater. So you guys are all our unsung hero and I gotta love the NFL for doing a moment of silence Yeah. through all the NFL games. It was very emotional being at the game and all the players um, had the French flag so this week we are, our unsung heroes are all those people in service protecting us from our freedom and the people that saved, you know, all the military and police in France that saved many lives and preventing other terrorist attacks. So you guys, there's only one way to combat evil. And as I say here on the show, tr spread love. And how do you do that? You try to do one act of kindness a day to a stranger, which will make the world a better place. What do you think, Tom? Do you think it's a good thing? Sound advice. Work, works for me. And I think your act of kindness is to adopt Jack. That's Yay. what you should do. Jack needs a home. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, thank you for watching. We love you. Kisses. Spread love.